before you say anything, just let me explain. How do we get to this point? Look how my uh, my ribs are like cracked at the bottom. Didn't notice this until they started making noises. Look at that. That's crazy. It's all on the road. Look at that. It's riding. Just riding. Look at that. Pops up. Pops up. Pops up. It's a matter of time, man. Before they go. Every once in a while, you got a couple that's stiff. Like that one. That's stiff. That one won't move. But I just find it so funny that the force is being applied from the backside like this. So, the more and more you're, you're giving it gas, the more and more it's just going. So, I just thought that was pretty funny, man. I thought maybe I would have to replace these gears, but they look decent. They don't look anything abnormal. And I'm imagining that's pretty much how they've been for the time or the duration. Of all right, here we go, people. Let me clean you off. Matter of fact, let me turn the TV off. Let me turn it down, rather. I got a bunch of stuff for you. All right, here we go. We got all this going on. Look at this. All this going on. Because what we got to do, we got to put that brown box, which is a drive belt, onto the bike. Look at this, man. It, I tell you, it's one thing, it's another one. But anywho, I just had the world of the time, so I had to share this with you. And I like to show things that people don't show you as well either. So, all right, I got all this done. Got all this done. And this thing right here has been a pain in my glute. So let me explain what you gotta do. It's gonna be a short video this week. So, what I did was for mine, remember it's a 2012 uh, Touring, let's say. I don't know if it's just a Road King Classic, whatever. Here we go. What I did, and it was a pain in the butt. I'm just letting you know. I took a 316 and I put it on the fat part of this boat. Okay? Put it on the fat part of this boat. This is on the clutch side. Move around to the right side. On the brake side, you have another nut. Where is it? Let me find it. It's been a pain in the butt to get out. Here it is. This is the screw. It goes in there just like this. So, my problem was, when I was trying to do them, I put the other side on a breaker bar on this side and just let it fall into my uh, saddlebag area right here. And I just let it sit. And then what I was trying to do, I was trying to take this ratchet. Most people take a take a um, impact wrench and do it, but I don't like to do stuff with impact wrench. I just like to do it with my own hands. Maybe when I get old, I'll figure that out. But anyways, I was taking this wrench and I was trying to turn this and nothing was happening. When I watch everyone else video, when they turn this, the other side would just fall down and then it would do its thing and it would come off. But mine wasn't doing that. So after a bunch of times, man, I've done, I've been through everything. Matter of fact, I even cut my sensor to go into my exhaust pipe. I figure I'll solder it back on there and we'll go from there. So that, I'm just letting you know how bad it's been for me. Anyways, um, I, so I went through that process of trying to get everything to get off, you know, by hand. So then I called my man, uh, Brian, at the Ride Factory, and I went on Facebook to see if anybody else could give me any uh, solutions as to how to get it off. Everybody kept saying basically what I was doing at the same time. So it is what it is. So I called my man, Brian. Matter of fact, he checked back up on me later. And he was like, hey, did you get it off? I was like, no, man, I just need some guidance. So I guess he started thinking. And he was like, hey, put some fire on this. So what I did was, let me see. I want to show you. I got to show you everything. Here we go. I took my propane torch, what I use for firework. And at first, I heated up the brake side. And it made it really easy. Before it was really hard to turn. But I uh, used the, the propane torch. And I'll tell you this, this is what I did. I'm, I'm giving you everything. I sprayed it down with water. You can see the water that's there. So just in case nothing would you know, catch a fire, whatever. So every once in a while I see a little fire, I spray everything to make sure it wouldn't catch on fire. So that's one way I, you know, better yet got it from going. So I tried that. Uh, it turned much easier, but nothing was still happening. So then I'm like, okay, let me try the other side. So I went to the other side. Here we go on the other side. And I did the same thing. So what I did was 
I had my phone on like three minutes. So I would let it just sit there for three minutes, spray it down, spritz it with water, make sure nothing catches fire. And I'll tell you this, be cautious because you have your vent for your air tank back here too. So remember, flames, uh, better yet, fire start with fumes. So be careful. I sprayed everything, did what I got to do, and went back at it, and nothing happened again. Like I said, I put my 316 on this fat part, not this one. This is half inch, and this is 316. So if you're going to do it, you need a 316 specific for this bike. I'm not sure. I'm just telling you my experience. So 316, and then on the other side, you need the half inch for this screw. So, all right, so then I got frustrated. So my wife, my AKA assistant, she said, how about you bring out the torque wrench or the impact one more time? So I put it on there and I just, I was just mad, man. It is what it is. So I just put it on there and just let it go. And then something said, how about you hit it forward and then rip it back? How about when I did that, it, bo it, it broke a loose. We got action. I appreciate you, Brian. I sure do. Thank you. And bam. Listen, I've been doing this since 11 o'clock. Right now it is, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Here's my phone. It's 8. 8.16. That's crazy. But like I say, man, this job can't be that hard, man. Just make sure you torque everything, do what you got to do. It seems extreme, but at the end of the day, it is what it All is. All right, we had to come in here to get another part for the swing arm, so let's go in here, jump and get it, and then we back at it, man. Line them up, line them up, line them up. Look, check this out, man. Look at this. It's what it's called, shark skin? I like it. It's a subtle blue. Looks nice. Hey, just FYI, these are the ones that go in the rear fork. They should be mobile like that, eh? Although mine's is stuck and it's not moving, so. Yeah, we shall see. So just in case you were wondering what the cost may be. That's individual. Hopefully my address isn't on there. Don't come see me. In total for two. All right, we moving, man. All right, I had to get a picture of this, man. That color, I don't know. It seems kind of dark on here, but it's really light in person. I think it's called like shark skin or something like that. That's pretty cool. I like that color. Nice and subtle. Looks good on this bike here. All right, check it out, man. We over here to uh, what, Gator uh, Harley Davidson. We over here to get still in the old ring. So let's go in here and see what we got to do, man. Trying to make it happen. All right, in and out. Time to go home. It's just crazy what this place looks like when it's not any type of festival. Normally have all the vendors right here in these spots motorcycles parking the grass back there in the back but i don't know i just think it's pretty cool all right we're moving all right we're over here at burt's burt's barracuda they said they can put this piece in for me so we're gonna see what we could do so just give me a moment we should be inside and we'll go from there and we're back getting that swing arm let's see if she saved us any money by pressing out those spaces. We'll see. I got a feeling she didn't, but you know, that's life, whatever. Most of y'all probably like, you should just replace them anyway. Hey, when you start spending your money, you think about it, all right? All right, I'm back. And I got a bad taste in my mouth, man. Before I get to going and getting out of hand, my assistant just said I, I didn't press record and i did impress record anyways here we go when you guys are doing this install these bearings should be stiff so when i took them out the bearings were just as stiff as that but they have a pivot and head on them which i'll show you in a minute so down below i have the old ones and this is what they look like when they're pressed in and see how stiff this one is that one's stiff it isn't moving and that's what I replaced. There's two pieces. You need this piece and you also need this bearing which pivots, I'm assuming, to give it a little flex. So one was stiff and the other one was free, just like this one. I'm assuming since I had these pressed by Harley, 
that this is correct. It should be stiff. If yours is moving as such, I'm assuming that that is not necessarily a good thing. So this is what I took out and it's moving all over the place. So I'm imagining that the bearing is out of whack. And this is what I got. So we're getting ready to put this thing back in and I guess I'll bring it back. Maybe, maybe not. All right, just wanted to inform you. I gotta let you know this too. It says to lightly, lightly, I didn't do a light, but it says lightly lube with anti-seize, the rod that goes through it. I'm gonna tell you this beforehand, make sure you put your belt in there. Don't forget. Um, What else? What I did was I put these in, these pieces here that go on the end. And I lubed them up on the inside with anti seeds. I don't think it's, I don't think this touches anything, but I just don't want it to get um, rusty like it was when I took it apart. So I put those in. I've already tried this. I'm just trying to give you guys some heads up. Um, also, to that rubber piece, make sure you put it in that little. There's a little notch in there. Let me see if I can pull it out for you. Ah, there's a little notch right here hopefully i can yeah there you go there's a little notch there i rubbed i um cleaned that out a little bit so it could fit in hopefully without any uh confusion so i'll put that the black piece back in make sure it goes in that notch you got a notch right here at the top make sure it fits in there correctly and i put both of those in so i'm ready to put it in and when i put it in i'll come back with you guys and Hopefully things will be successful. Let's go. I, I enjoy working on my bike, but I just found it really bad that I got to be working on it when I could be out there riding. Matter of fact, this is the first week of, uh, I would say, bike week or riding time because right now we have Gibsonton um, uh, Rally going on now, and it's another one up the road, and I'll try to get there tomorrow. Today is Saturday, the, uh, I think it's the 14th? I think it's the 14th, whatever. But I'll put that in the video, so... I just wanted to let y'all know, man, because, you know, sometimes people think this is very hard. It is not very hard. You just got to put your mind to it, read your book, do what you got to do. And I definitely want to show you this because a lot of people, when they do the same job, they cut through certain places where you are going to struggle. And I feel like this is where I struggle. So I want that video to be out there to help somebody. So when they get in their garage, they can do what they got to do. All right, man. We'll talk to you later. And maybe one day you will see that you need help with your rear end forks. They're not called a swing arm. In the book, it's called rear forks. And you'll tune in and watch me, and I'll be very helpful. Until next time, talk to you later.